So in this presentation, I'll just outline some basic principles about CLT, what it is. Um, Uli has already described what wood fibre is, so I don't have to do that. And then I'll explain how they work together and I'll give some case studies. So it's a very practical, uh, short presentation. You'll be happy to hear before lunch. Um, CLT, it refers to cross-laminated timber construction. It has been used for over two decades, mainly on continent. Um, it's made from several layers of timber stacked together crosswise, normally at 90 degrees. So the timber it, it typically comes in three ply or five ply. And for structural loading, it's the vertical ply piece which takes the loads. The horizontal plies are discounted. Um, so um, it gives very high dimensional stability, strength and rigidity. It's a viable alternative to concrete, masonry and steel. So in, in medium to high rise building, it's particularly good. And it's used in many groundbreaking projects throughout the UK. There's a project on the Hill of Tower coming up soon in the next couple of months in Ireland here where it's going to be using CLT for a residential building. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, the world's tallest residential tower, a 14-story CLT passive house in Norway, has been built in, um, in, in, in Bergen in Norway. And there's a video online. If you Google that project, the structural engineers give a full uh, YouTube video on how they calculated the loadings. So it shows the heights you can go with timber is increasing more and more now. Um, and there's no reason it can't go up to 20 stories, I'm told, by some engineers. And CLT has unsurpassed environmental benefits. This is a, a very good um, reference to uh, uh, a research in institute in the UK called Wood for Good. And they carry out these very powerful um, graphic displays where they show buildings which are built with timber and what the environmental impact could have been if it was built from concrete, for example. And this is a project in Brid Bridport House in London, a block of apartments built with uh, CLT. And what they show is this construction has absorbed over 1 million kilos of CO2 before it was actually built, the raw materials. So it's a very different way of thinking. We're not just looking at carbon reduction and heating, we're looking at the material impact. If this were built from concrete, you would invert that because for every tonne of concrete you make, you emit a tonne of CO2. So instead of emitting all this carbon, it has locked it up and sequestered it in the fabric. <clears throat> so in terms of using a CLT building, the steps for CLT are generally, firstly you erect your CLT structure, solid wood walls. You bolt them together or maybe use a dovetail pre-engineered connection to connect them. Then you'd add in your windows. And at this stage, it's pretty watertight. And some people at this stage just tape the joints. And then they apply their exterior insulation. And by its nature, because the wood is so thick, it has adequate vapor resistance to act as a reliable vapor controller. So at this stage, you could go ahead and fit wood fiber straight onto it, batten it and clad it, and that's it. Very straightforward. But in our climate, people often apply an exterior weather protective layer in case you want to expose the CLT on the inside, because visually for aesthetics, it's a beautiful material and you don't want water coming in at the build stage and staining it. So if that's the case, you can apply one of the proclima membranes on the outside for air tightness, weather protection, and for vapor control as well. And this is called Proclima DA. It's taped on laps, sealed around windows, and sealed at the foundation level. So following that, the Gutex is applied. In this case, for example, a single ply of 160 millimeter of Gutex multi-term is applied with temporary fastenings, which are thermally broken here. And then the battens are used where the fixing goes through to the CLT structure. And that's what gives you your permanent fixing for the Gutex board. It's fixed through the batten through to the CLT. And the beauty of CLT is you're not looking for a stud. It's a homogenous material, so you're always going to hit the CLT with your screw. And then you have a cavity for ventilation and you're cladding on the outside of timber, cement board, or, or whatever that may be. So that's the basic steps to applying the, um, to applying the, the wood fiber. Here are just some projects we've been involved with, which use CLT in conjunction with Gutex. This is the Woodland Trust headquarters in Grantham in England. And it's a three-storey 
CLT building designed by an architect practice called Feeling Clegg Bradley in Bath. And it's, it's got a BRIAM excellent rating. On the exterior walls, it used 282 millimeters of wood fiber, fixed straight to the CLT. On the roof, it used 180 millimeters of wood fiber, and the wall yield value is 0.11 watts per meter degree Kelvin. And the Proclima and Siri airtight items were also used. So on the walls, we used com combinations of boards to build up to the 282 millimeter depth. You'd wonder where that two millimeter comes from. It's, um, we combined two layers of 140 millimeter thermosafe home again, and then they applied a Gutex multiplex top board on the outside, which was 22 mil. And then they sealed around windows and doors with the Proclima seal straight to the exterior Gutex board to give it the uh, water and wind tightness. tightness. From that, we move on to another project here. This is the um, Steiner School in Froome in England. It's three different buildings um, on the same plant, all on the same site, all built with CLT. Again, designed by Field and Clegg Bradley. I'm not sure what BRIAM rating it got, but it used a single ply of 160 millimeter ultra uh, multi term on the outside and achieved a U value of 0.19. What was interesting on this project was the architects initially specified Gutex, and they said, now it's a design and build project and the contractor will likely use something else and they will value engineer the Gutex off the project and bring in another alternative to meet the same U value. So the architects were preferring to use the Gutex. And what was really interesting after a certain period of time, the architect came back to us and said, um, okay, we've looked at other materials. We looked at mineral wool, we've looked at polyurethane, we've looked at these materials. But actually, in a cost perspective, the most economical way to insulate this building is with a wood fiber board like Gutex. So the primary reason it was used here was for a cost saving measure. Because in terms of application, it's much easier to apply, there are less layers, and it's much more uh, cost effective. So the principle of the system is, is very simple. And this is an early architectural sketch of the project that um, Will gave me permission to publish. <laughs> and you could just see the simplicity of it with the CLT. You've got your Gutex. There isn't a necessity for a membrane on the outside of the Gutex, but he did apply one because the outer cladding is open jointed. And that's not an issue for the Gutex to have open jointed timber cladding because it's UV stable. But for a visual aesthetic, he didn't want to see the wood fiber. He wanted a black look behind the facade. So then they used a Proclima UV stable membrane called Solitex Fronta Quattro, which you see the sister product there. But it's, a, it's another version of that, which has been tested to EN standards to over 5,000 hours exposure to UV light, permanent UV light. So it's very UV stable. So that's what they used behind that. And then at the batten, and then at the cladding, and then of these uh, HECO screws, which I'll come to in a moment. So there it is on site, where the multi-term is initially held in place with temporary fixings before the battens are applied. Later on in the afternoon, Dave Broderick from DB Plaster, who's here, he's a registered installer of the thermal wall system. He'll be doing some demonstrations of the fitting of the Gutex boards and walls and roofs. Um, Finally, this, this project is a residential building in the middle of London. Called, uh, it was a private building, and the client was called uh, Bernard Tulkins. And uh, Roman and Sapora uh, and Dave Broderick worked on this project. And it used the deepest layer of Gutex we've ever worked with. And we have the record over Germany as being the suppliers of the thickest layer of Gutex to any wall. So I've got that one up on, on Germany. So I mentioned Shane Long to Uli every day, <laughs> the speed drum, and I mentioned the 320 millimeters. And this project, um, it's a certified passive house now. It wasn't at the time I gave this presentation earlier in the year. Um, it used the Proclima system on the outside, attaining 0.29 air changes per hour, and has a U-value of 0.1 on the walls, which have a batten, a Gutex, three, 320 millimeters of Gutex, then a batten, then a plywood, uh, and then this uh, zinc clad, so it's ventilated between the plywood and, and the Gutex. So that's your CLT. That's your Gutex 320 millimeters. So this is an early drawing. It actually was um, 
they used a 140 and a 120 millimeter of Thermosafe Homogen. And Thermosafe Homogen, you can see, just to reiterate, is, is this one, to build up the bulk depth of insulation. So it is a conductivity of 0.037. Here they used an airtight membrane to the CLT, the Proclima DA. And on the outside, they used a, I think it was a 50 millimeter Gutex Ultratherm board on the outside. And then you've a vented cavity, plywood, and a zinc cladding. So, to fit 320 millimeters of Gutex onto a CLT, you need quite a long screw. And that's why I brought this. They used a half a meter long engineered screw for fixing to the wall. So if you weren't working with a CLT and you were dealing with a 44 mil wide stud, it'd be potluck really if you're gonna hit that stud. And that's one of the great things about CLT. You have great flexibility. And the reason the limit of thickness of Gutex is 320 millimeters is because the screws are only available up to half a meter in length. So you won't get longer screws than that for fitting it. And these screws, um, I visited the manufacturer and got training from them on their software <coughs> for carrying out calculations in Germany. And they're an incredible screw. Um, I'll just hand around that sample. That's a, called a Hico Topics. It's a countersunk one. But the standard one we would supply for exterior insulation on roofs and, and walls when you're using the battens would be these six mil screws rather than the eight mil. Reason being our timbers are at, a, at around about 38 mil wide and, and rafters. And you can't apply any, a screw any wider than six times the diameter of the screw is the minimum that width of stud. So six mil screw by six is 36 mil, so that it's within the tolerance for the 38 mil rafter or stud. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah, what I found with them screws is, they've got a, you don't have to pre-drill. They, they have a pre-drill head on them. Um, this shank on the top really reduces the tension on the head of the screw. So you don't get the heat build up or the potential break of the screw. And when I've used the screws, if you switch to other screws, what you'll find is the drill overheats, so your battery runs out quicker, or you can burn out your motor too. When I was getting training from HECO in Germany, the, uh, the trainer drilled various screw manufacturer screws into solid wood, and then he asked me to, to um, he put the screws on the table beside him quickly, and asked me to lift the screws, and I lifted them and I nearly burnt a hand on myself from some of the other screws, from the, from the heat build up on it, and I had a good laugh at that. So um, with the Hego screws, you just find it just goes through the wood like butter. And um, the software program is calculate, when I carry out the calculations for the screw fixings, it's all to Euro code five. So because the screw now forms a structural part, once you have that batten on the outside and it's holding on the cladding, it's now a structural component. And likewise on the roof, if you go with above 50 millimeter insulation on the outside of the roof, now you're, you, you, you have a cantilever effect once you're going above that 50 millimeter. So you have to think about that with your fixings. And HECO, on a roof, you've got your shear force as well as your suction, and likewise on the wall. So in our calculations, you'll see it later on in the application by the lads, they'll show you um, how to fit the screws. It's actually very straightforward, um, but um, you'll see it You'll, you, you'll see it shortly. So um, typically when you're fitting the screws, we have these adapters or um, guides, because when you're fitting the screws, you use one type of screw, but you fit in one at 90 degrees to your frame, that's called a suction screw, and then the next one is at, you come down 30 degrees, and that's a shear screw. And then you alternate from suction, shear, suction, shear, and so on, and you follow a pattern. But because they're engineered and you've calculated it, you actually use maybe screws every meter at meter centers. You're not actually peppering it with lots of screws. And this guide helps ensure you're getting your, your angle right, your guide for your 30 degree angle. And there's Roman doing his thing with his uh, half meter long screw. And there you see Gary, his colleague, going on ahead with the multiple layers of the Gutex on the walls. And then for weather tightness around the aluminium window sills, they used underneath the sills these butyl 
flashing tapes Proclima make, their Exo seal tapes. Just in case water got behind the sill, you have this flashing of a butyl Exo seal tape behind. And the good thing about the Proclima butyl tape here is, if you're familiar with butyl, it's a very good flexible tape, but at low temperatures it becomes quite stiff and hard to work with. But the Proclima Exo seal NCARS tape, it uses a, an acrylic glue, so at low temperatures it still stays very flexible. So you don't lose that uh, benefit of the butyl effect for flexibility, but it still maintains a very secure bond. And then on the inside, I do have some internal images of this. You can see the, in the CLT exposed. You can see the, the nice stairwell all wood. So it's a, a very nice building. And these beautiful ventilation ducts exposed. <laughs> so in terms of uh, CLT and wood fiber, they're very compatible and they offer the optimum combination of vapor permeability for the construction. They offer uh, outstanding thermal resistance for passive house or for low energy building. And the off-site nature of the construction really reduces the risk of issues on site with the CLT. They're very fast to erect. The material you're building with has locked in carbon. So you're not taking a carbon intensive material and it's cost effective as well, particularly when you go above three stories. In, in the research I've read about it anyway. So that, that's that.